Chapter thirty one of Bob's A Girl Detective. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Bob's A Girl Detective by Grace May North. Chapter thirty one Four Romances. Time two weeks later. Place the kitchen of the Pensinger Mansion. Characters. Gloria, Gwendolyn, Roberta, Lena May, and little Tony. Haven't things been happening with a whirl of late? Bobs exclaimed as she passed a plate of hot muffins. I feel dizzy. Honestly, I do. I'm so proud of Dick, she added as she sank into her own place at the table. All of his own accord, he told me he's going back for one more year at law school, and then he and Ralph are going to hang out a shingle for themselves. They're going to start a new firm and be partners. Judge Caldwaller Corey thinks that his son must be crazy when he was already a junior member of an old and well-established firm. They got the idea from Arden Wentworth, I suppose. He has made good by himself, and the plan rather appeals to Dick and Ralph. They're great pals, aren't they, these two? Brothers couldn't care for each other more, I do believe, Lena May said, as she buttered a muffin for her little charge. And to think that they are to marry sisters in the dim and distant future. That ought to cement the brotherly ties even closer than ever, Gloria remarked as she smiled at Gwendolyn, who, wind-browned and sun-rosy, looked as though she had never been ill. Gwen, you and Ralph fell in love rather suddenly, didn't you? Lena May inquired. "'Maybe so,' her sister replied. "'Ralph says that he has always felt sure that he would know the girl who was meant for him the very moment he saw her. "'And he insists he loved me the minute he met me at Orange Hills Inn.' "'Roberta leaned over and placed her hand on that of her sister. "'I'm so glad,' she said, "'for I do believe that Ralph is almost as fine a chap as my Dick, and that is saying a great deal. "'And to think that if it hadn't been for the Pensinger mystery we might never have met him.' "'By the way,' Gloria remarked, "'what has become of the Pensinger mystery?' Roberta laughed as she arose to replenish the muffin plate from the oven. "'I'm afraid it is destined to always remain a mystery. Ralph and I have followed every clue we could possibly think of. It's a shame, isn't it, not to have this old place owned by someone, to say nothing of the money?' After a moment's silence, Gloria asked, "'Lena May, was there any news of general interest in Dean's letter this morning?' Their younger sister smiled brightly. "'Oh, yes, indeed. He was so glad to get back to that New England farm where he can breathe. He said that there are wonderful possibilities in the old house, and he is going to begin work on it at once. He hopes by the time that I am eighteen it will look like a real home. But there was another item in the letter that I am sure you will all be glad to hear. His group of nature poems has been accepted by a magazine called The New England Homestead, and the cheque they sent seems like a real fortune to Dean. The best of it is, they have asked for more. Great! I for well shall be most proud to have a poet for a brother-in-law. Then, to Lena May, maybe you thought you were keeping it a secret from us, little one, but you weren't, and we're glad, just as glad as we can be. The youngest, shining-eyed, looked up at the older sister, who sat at the head of the table. Then she said, "'Of course I had told Glow, because she is a mother to us, but after that letter from Dean this morning, I want to tell you all.' Then, merrily, Bobs exclaimed, "'Now, Gloria, we've all fessed up but you. Aren't you and Mr. Hardinian going to be married some day and live happily ever after?' "'I never knew two people who seemed better suited for each other,' Gwendolyn commented. Gloria smiled. "'And what would you have us live on, dear? You know that it takes Mr. Hardinian's entire income to pay the expenses of his boys' club. Of course, the little chaps pay five cent a night for a bunk when they have work, but he has to loan money to others who are out of work, who might take to stealing if they had no other way to procure food. However, they have never failed to pay him back when they did get work. Their oldest sister's enthusiastic praise of the welfare worker told how great was her admiration for that truly noble young man, if nothing more. "'Crickets! What was that?' Bob suddenly exclaimed. "'Only the telephone, my dear,' Lena May remarked. "'Bobsy, will you answer it?' Three minutes later the girl fairly plunged back into the kitchen, her shining eyes assuring them that she had heard something of an astonishing nature. "'It was Ralph!' she exclaimed as she sank down into the nearest chair. "'The mystery is solved!' "'Solved?' her sisters repeated inquiringly all at once. "'How? When? Who is the heir?' Roberta laughed. "'Well, here's where I resign as a detective,' she declared. "'I've had three cases, and although each one has been successfully solved in spite of me, it has not been because of any cleverness on my part.' "'But, Bobs, do tell us what Ralph said. We're bursting with curiosity.' 
My partner detective feels as chagrined about it as I do, for the solution of the mystery just turned up. We neither of us ferreted it out as we hoped that we would. Bobita, you're just trying to tantalize us, Gwen declared. Do tell us from the beginning. Very well, then I will. Ralph said that his dad happened to recall something recently which his father once told him. You know it was Ralph's grandfather who was the intimate friend and legal adviser of Mr. Pensinger. It seems that the week before his death, Mr. Pensinger had sent some important papers and a letter to the office of Mr. Cadwalla Corey, the grandfather, you understand. Just as he was about to examine them, he was called away on urgent business, and he left the papers on his desk, expecting to return soon. The Corey building was even then in the process of construction, but Ralph's grandfather had moved in before it was quite completed. That day, the floor was being put down in the room adjoining the small office. Later, when Mr. Cadwalla Corey returned, his mind was so filled with the intricacies of the new case which had just been given to him, that he did not even notice that the brown packet containing the Pensinger papers was gone. In fact, he had forgotten that it ever existed, but a week later, when he received word that his friend, Mr. Pensinger, had died suddenly, he recalled the papers and began to search for them, but they were never found. "'Oh, I know where they were,' Lena May said brightly, "'under the floor!' Bobs nodded, her eyes glowing. "'That's just it,' she affirmed. "'Recently, Judge Carwalla Corey said to Ralph, "'Either we will have to tear down this old building of ours, "'or we will have to renovate it and bring it up to date.' Ralph is romantic enough to want to retain the atmosphere of the old days of his grandfather, and so he favoured the later plan. Soon carpenters were tearing up at the office floors to replace them with hard wood, and the packet was found. And in those papers had Mr. Pensinger made some different disposition of his property? Gloria inquired. Bobs nodded. Yes, she said. It seems that Mr. Pensinger, after his wife's death, visited Hungary, found his daughter Marilyn, who lived but a short time, and so, as he was without an heir, he had written to Mr. Cadwalla Corey, requesting him to use the pensing of fortune wherever he thought it would be most needed. "'What will become of this house?' Lena May inquired. Ralph didn't say. He wants to tell that himself. In fact, he said he was coming right up in the whiz, and that he wasn't coming alone either. "'I suppose Dick Delaney will be with him,' Gloria remarked as she cleared the table." "'We aren't going to be kept long in suspense,' Gwendolyn said, "'for the whiz just passed the window, and there's the knocker. "'Shall I go to the door?' "'Before her sisters could reply, that maiden was halfway down the long hall, "'and a second later she appeared with Ralph at her side. Two other young men followed closely. "'One indeed was Dick Delaney, and the other was Mr. Hardinian. "'His dark, expressive eyes showed that he was much mystified by all that was happening. "'Shall we go into the salon?' Gloria inquired when the greetings were over. No, indeed. This dining-room corner with its cheerful grate fire is the pleasantest part of the old house, Ralph declared. Dick, help me bring in another chair or two. Now sit down, everybody, and I'll tell you the results of my conference with my father. Ralph was plainly elated about something, which, as yet, he had revealed to no one. When they were seated, he turned at once to the tall, dark Hungarian. "'Mr. Hardinian, you were telling me last week that your temporary wooden building for the boys' club is to be torn down next month, that a tobacco factory may be erected, were you not?' "'Yes,' was the reply of the still puzzled young man. "'I can't imagine where I am to take my boys. I don't like to have them bunkless, even for one night.' "'Of course not, nor shall they be,' Ralph continued. Then he looked at the girls beamingly. "'Not if these young ladies will consent to having a model clubhouse erected in the old garden back of their mansion.' "'Ralph, how wonderful that would be!' Gloria exclaimed. "'But what do you mean?' "'Just what I say,' the lad replied. "'The former owner of this place wanted his fortune used for some good cause, "'and Dad and I thought it would be great to help Mr. Hardinian "'carry on his fine work right here on the very spot as a sort of memorial, "'and couldn't it be called the Pensinger Boy Club, or something like that?' "'Indeed it could. "'Mr. Hardinian's dark eyes express his appreciation more than words could have done.' Then, to the tall girl at his side, he said, Now, many of our dream plans for the boys can be made a reality. Turning to the others, he continued, I am sure that Gloria is now willing that I should tell you that she has consented to some day mother all of our boys, and because of this splendid new plan, I hope that the some day may be very soon. And it was. Indeed, before another year had passed, each of the girls was in a home of her own. End of chapter 31 End of Bob's A Girl Detective